gonna have a look and see what happens. Um, we are doing a Renishaw ball bar test. Now I bought my own kit a fair while back, didn't really end up using it, sold it to a friend when money was a little bit tight, uh, and then recently I bought it back again once this turned up and I wanted to sort of check this out once it was up and running. So we've got the kit, we've got the kit set up in the machine, we've got the laptop here, We've got the calibrator there. So before you do your tests, you sit your transducer in here and it tells it that it knows from that point to that point is exactly 150.0040 millimeters. Um, so you click on here, it knows that's done and then it tells you that this is calibrated. So the test is ready to run. Everything is set up. So I'm gonna, the program is in the machine there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run the test while we're sitting talking. It has an in feed and then it starts to do its arc. So it runs counterclockwise first and then it will run clockwise. Now while that's running in the background, um, I'd like to say a massive thank you to Aaron Morrill. Uh, sorry if you got your surname wrong, I'm trying to remember your surname then. Uh, this is CNC Repairman. You might have seen him on Instagram or on YouTube does um, all sorts of CNC repairs in America. I think they're based, I did look on his website, I think it's Washington, somewhere like that. He does all sorts of CNC repairs. Been doing it forever, I think it's um, running the family. And I messaged him regarding ball bar tests and if he could give me a few pointers while I'm doing this machine, because I've never run uh, one of these tests properly. When I first bought this kit, I run one on the other machine, but didn't really know what I was doing. With this machine, I'm trying to level it, I'm trying to get it dialed in. Obviously, everybody wants their machine to be as good as it can be for its age. This is now 25 years old. So I leveled it with the levels that I had available, um, which was one machine this level, which is pretty good. I couldn't get it perfect. I just kind of gave up in the end chasing, but I got it as good as I could. Um, I've also been speaking to Aaron and he's been telling me how to dial out errors that these tests show. So I've done this for pretty much a day and a half um, whilst the other machine has been running, doing the job and doing some parts. I've been sat in this chair with this laptop on this machine dialing out errors. Um, them errors were X and Y axis backlash. They were squareness errors obviously which can relate to machine mechanical problems but a lot of it can be taken out by um, leveling so he gave me some really good tips on leveling the guys obviously got loads of experience because just by seeing the results he told me right jack the front left you know so he he knows what he's talking about when he hasn't even got to be near the machine and what he told me just worked fantastic so wealth of experience there um, you can't buy experience as they say. So I'm really happy with how it's come out and I'm just gonna show you what the results are. So when these machines are new, what you're looking for, apologies there, just drop the camera. When these machines are new, what they're looking for mainly is circularity. So I've got my book here from my the F0E, which is sat here, that is a year 2000, and it has the actual original booklet with it. Now this has the results from the ball bar test when the machine was new. And you'll see there, the circularity was 0 0.0067 millimeters, so 6.7 microns. And this was in November, 7th of November 2000. And there's our test result there. And it shows you again, length of the ball bar, radius, best radius, um, X and Y, center. And it does actually have the tolerances that are allowed. Parallelism, um, table movement, T-slot straightness, etc., etc. What else have we got there? Squareness, squareness, spindle sweep, spindle run out. So you've got them issues, but 
the ball bar test is showing you and looking for circularity. Now, fortunately, this VF3 didn't have um, the original booklet, even though I bought it from the original owner. They did inform me that a few years back they sold another Haas, it was a VF2, and accidentally gave that red file with all its original info, the brands, etc., to the person who bought the other machine by mistake. And basically that was it, it was gone. So I didn't get anything with this machine. So okay, the ball bar test has finished. That shows you the rough graph there, telling you the test summary of run one and run two is completed. So what we can do is we can go down here and just click on this for data analysis. And it shows you in 10 micron divisions. That looks like a pretty good circle. And there we have got circularity on this machine of 7.3 microns. So this machine is almost as good for its circularity as that one was when it was brand new 22 years ago. This one's 25 years old. So well happy with that. We've also got a list there of our errors. And these ones are listed in the five top errors in the machine. So reversal spikes could be dialed out a little bit more. Reversal spikes in X, that one was Y, this one's X. Squareness of the machine, straightness in Y, and backlash. But you look at the backlash, 0 0.1 microns, 1.4 microns. I'm not gonna get that dialed in any better than it already is. Now, when you look at, for example, the squareness, you think, oh, well, the machine's out of square, that's 15.3 microns over a meter distance. So when you're making small parts like this down here, obviously that squareness error is gonna be next to nothing. We can go on to the next page. It shows you a little bit more information there. And then we can go to the table, which gives us the whole list of all the errors that the ball bar test um, will pick up. Backlash, reversal spikes, lateral play. See, there's almost zero lateral play. Cyclic errors, servo mismatch, 0 0.01 milliseconds. Um, scaling mismatch, 2.7 microns. So yeah, that I think is as good as I'm gonna get. So we've got positional tolerance of 58 microns and our circularity of 7.3 microns. Now, I thought the positional tolerance means that if you've got a G54 datum of X0, Y0, and you want to do a hole 100 millimetres away, that this machine can only get that within an accuracy of 58 microns of that 100 mil. But evidently, that's not how it works. Um, and from Aaron as well in America, CNC repairman, he said, ignore the positional tolerance because it's kind of nobody looks at that that is not what you're going for what you are gunning for what you are aiming at is your circularity um, your squareness your servo mismatches and things like that they're the ones you want to get dialed in and the end result is good circularity of the machine so he said considering this machine is 25 years old that is pretty much as good as it's ever going to get and there's some machines that are new brand spanking new that are further out than this. So considering with a bit of help from him and a bit of help from research online, that's the results I've got. I am very happy. Now I have machined a test part on here, which I'm gonna show you. Now this is just obviously a little tiny aluminium block. Now you can see the finish there on the OD of that part is really nice really smooth nice mirror finish the engraving is nice we've got some drilled tapped holes now the tapped holes could be better because i didn't use any oil and the coolant wasn't even aiming at the tap but that was my fault because i hadn't done the spigot positions but what i want to look at is the finish on the floor of this pocket now it is silky smooth to the touch. It really is nice and smooth. You can't feel anything. 
but you've got a lot of tool marks. Now, this could be to do with how I've run the test piece because I did actually take this out in one hit and because of it come round and steps out and does about half a mil step over until it gets to the outside of the pocket, it, um, it didn't have a finish step down because it added like another six minutes to the program, so I didn't bother. So maybe that is to do with my problem of the finish, or maybe there is a little bit of play in the bearings in the spindle, or potentially the Z-axis ball screw, or the Z-axis bearing pack. I'm gonna look into that at a later date. If you've watched my gearbox video, <coughs> excuse me, you'll notice that I did say the spindle bearings were a bit, a bit rough. Um, I think that's down to water in the air supply at the last owner's place on this specific machine because I don't know if I mentioned before in a previous video um, that when I come in in the morning on my other machines because these are oil air mist fed bearings you get oil dripping out from around the spindle normally on the, on the drive dogs this one, it had the oil dripping out once I'd changed all the flow meters, but it was brown, like rusty water. So I've got a feeling water has got into them bearings and contaminated them and turned them slightly rusty. And especially as it had no high gear when I bought the machine and they'd been using it in low gear for, it might have been months if not years, that water and the machine wouldn't have ever heated up drilling and tapping parts at like three, four, five hundred RPM um, and it wouldn't evaporated that water out of the oil. So that could potentially be where the damage has gone and that may be to do with the surface finish error or issue that I've got here. But I'm actually, I'm more than happy to use it like that. It's just got a different appearance, you know. I prefer it with less of a tool mark on that, but it's still a good part. It's still smooth and it's still within tolerance size wise. So yes, that's a quick video for you. Renishaw ball bar test on the Haas VF3 completed and circularity of, what were we? 7.3 microns. So I'm happy with that. Hope you enjoyed the little video. Please like and subscribe if you like the content. Cheers for watching and we'll see you again soon.